Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the MedPlus Health Services Limited Q4FY23 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Prasad Reddy from MedPlus. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Faisal. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of MedPlus, it's my utmost pleasure to welcome you all to the MedPlus Q4 FI23 earnings conference call to discuss the financial results, which was done 25th May 2023. We have with us today the senior management team represented by Mr. Madhika Reddy, Gangadi, Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director, Mr. Sujit Mahato, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Chetan Dixit, Chief Strategy Officer. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some of the statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainty. Please note the disclaimer mentioning these risks and uncertainties on slide one of the investor presentation shared with all of you earlier. Documents relating to our financial performance have been circulated earlier and these have also been posted on our corporate website. I would now hand over the call to Mr. Madhikar for his opening comments. Thank you and over to you, Madhikar. Thank you, Prasad. Good evening, everyone. At MetPlus, we are proud to have a dedicated team of over 22,000 people who consistently demonstrate discipline and hard work in delivering essential services to our valued customers. As of March 31st, we have been serving the healthcare and household needs of communities in 552 cities across seven states through our extensive network of 3,822 pharmacy um, <coughs> stores. During the current quarter, we have successfully expanded our presence into 55 additional cities. In addition to our pharmacy operations, MetPlus operates three integrated radiology centers four uh, slightly smaller radiology centers which have up to the ultrasound um, uh, machines and over 100 collection centers. These facilities play a crucial role in our commitment to providing affordable diagnostic services to our customers. Our store expansion initiatives remain on track and we continue to grow our presence. Over the past 12 months, we have added a network net total of 1074 stores, with 284 stores opening in Q4 alone. Notably, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu saw the highest number of store additions with 88 and 54 stores, respectively. Of the store openings in Q4, 58% were in Tier 2 and beyond, reflecting our strategic focus on these markets. Currently, out of our 3,822 stores, 1,675 are located in Tier 2 cities and beyond, which are advantages in terms of store economics to us. We recognize the potential of these markets and aim to further expand due to the maturity of our operations and robust supply chain capabilities. During Q4, we experienced 19 store closures, slightly higher than the 17 in Q3. However, taking into account both openings and closures, we achieved a net addition of 261 stores in Q4 compared to 229 in Q3. Over the course of the next 12 months, over the past 12 months, we have successfully added a total of 1,074 stores. In terms of age of our store network, we have categorized our network as follows. Approximately 30 of our stores are less than a year old. Around 19% of our stores are in their second year of operation, and the remaining have been operating for more than two years. To illustrate the impact of our rapid store expansion on the age distribution of our network, by the end of Q4, approximately 49% fall within less than two years. In comparison, during Q4 of 2022, only 40% of our stores were less than two years. It's important to note that all stores within uh, less than two years age bracket are still in the ramp of place and from a financial perspective, they currently have a negative impact on our operating EBITDA. However, as these stores mature, we anticipate them contributing positively to our profitability. 
We closely monitor the time it takes for our new stores to break even. Our stores open between April 22 and September 22. Approximately 65% of them achieve break even within six months of operations. Additionally, around 71% of our new stores reach break even within seven months of opening. At the end of the quarter, our network has grown to 3,822 with 2 million plus square foot compared to 2,748 and 1 1.6 million square foot at the end of March 2022. The average store size was 547 square foot. To give you a sense of spread, we have 2,715 stores less than 600 and 1,107 stores that are greater than 600 square foot. With our expanded sale scale, we are strategically positioned to enhance our revenue share from private label products. Our private label range is designed to offer customers high quality products at affordable prices. Currently, Netflix offers over 900 thoughtfully curated SKUs spanning both pharmaceutical and non pharmaceutical categories. Private label sales accounted for 14.5%. This is the operator. The audio is not very clear, sir. I request you if you can keep the mic slightly close to you. Sure, will do. <coughs> We're pleased to report that our efforts to increase the share of private label products in our customer shopping basket are progressing positively. Notably, our private label pharmaceutical range has shown promising growth, contributing to 8.4% of our overall revenue. Further, our expanding presence in tier two cities and beyond is making a significant impact on the revenue mix. Sales from these markets accounted for 30 percent of our revenues in the current quarter, demonstrating an increase of 30% in the same period last year. This indicates the success of our expansion strategy and the growing acceptance of our offerings in these markets. We continue to expand our cover and quotes for our online orders. This complements well with our physical stores. Netplus will continue to focus on increasing the coverage of our two hour delivery period, uh, two hour delivery offering. Store pickups as a share of online orders continues to maintain a high share, higher share than home delivery reflective of the convenience and accessibility of our store network. Our strategy on online remains unchanged. We have not spent heavily to acquire customers online, and we'll continue to maintain our omni channel as a profitable channel. Now I'll request Sujit to give an update on our numbers. Thank you, Madhukar. Now on our quarter's performance, our consolidated revenue was rupees 12,530 million, uh, which has a growth of 29.7% on a year-on-year -year basis and 5.3% quarter-on-quarter. Our consolidated operating EBITDA stood at rupees 406 million, representing 3.2%. This is a 37.6% year-on-year growth and 9.6% quarter-on-quarter improvement. Around 99% of our revenue is from our pharmacy operations. The pharmacy operating EBITDA was Rs. 447 million, representing 3.6%. Uh, our stores performing, I would like to update on our stores older than 12 months. Revenue from these stores in Q4 was Rs. 10,737 million, or 88% of our pharmacy revenue. These stores had a store level EBITDA margin of 10.3%. The store level operating ROC of these stores stood at 60.5%. Award year on the store level EBITDA margin by age and vintage. While stores greater than 12 months had a margin of 10.3%, this was 11% for stores greater than 24 months and 7.8% for stores in the age bracket of 13 to 24 months. If the allocated non stores related cost, the operating EBITDA of store greater than 12 months would be Rs. 537 million, which translates to a margin of 5%. Our net working capital for Q4 was 64 days, which comprised of the following. The inventory in our warehouse was 35 days. As you are aware, because of the sales trajectory of new stores, their inventory turnover is lower in the first year. In quarter four, the inventory level of our first year store was 114 days. In comparison, for our store older than 12 months, 
the inventory was 39 days. Now I request Chetan to update on our diagnostic business. Over to you, Chetan. Thank you, Sajid, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. At the end of March 23, in our pilot market of Hyderabad, we had three full-service diagnostic centers, four level two centers, so that's seven, plus we had just over 100 collection centers. In Q1 of FY24, we expect to open our fourth full-service diagnostic center, and we have already gone live with three additional level two centers. So that's seven at the end of Q4, being currently 10 and expected to be 11 by quarter end. We have the short recap for those who are not already acquainted with our approach in that. Any customer of Metro's Advantage plan can avail the full range of radiology tests and pathology tests at 70%, 75% discount to MRP. There are three differences in our model versus a typical peer. Firstly, we do not operate via franchisees. Secondly, our collection centers are housed within our existing pharmacies. And thirdly, our plan is designed such that we do not depend on the referral network of patient walk-in. We had launched the Netflix Advantage plan in February 22. Up to 31st March 23, we had sold a growth of 75,000 plans. Since these plans have a one-year validity, going forward we will be disclosing active plans and underlying life. As on 31st March, we had 93,000 active plans and 163,000 underlying lives. While we expect seasonality headwinds in Q1, we have crossed the milestone of 100,000 active plans, and we are now setting our sights on the 150,000 milestone. Plan renewal is an important area for us. Given that diagnostics is not a high-frequency usage, say like grocery, our preferred metric for monitoring renewals will be renewals within six months from expiry. At this stage, it is early days for us to draw a trend. However, we will provide an update in next quarter's call. That's our update on diagnostics. Handing back to Madhukar. Thank you, Sajid. Uh, so going forward, uh, what can we expect from that class? We currently operate in a very attractive pharmacy group and our price for growth on the back of our store expansion. We have a platform of 4,000 odd stores right now. And this allows us scale benefits, which we will continue to reap as we go forward. So our expansion plans continue to remain in place for the next one. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, sir. The audio is uh, not clear to us. Okay. Um, our cluster-based network enables profitable omni-channel service, and we continue to expand this as equal. Scale allows a larger share for a private label basket. And our diagnostic projects, project has proven that we can use our pharmacy stores to cross-sell other healthcare solutions, and we will explore other avenues that can add incremental sales without increasing costs. So that's the end of our update. I request you to open the lines for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Sipins are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Prakash Agarwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. Uh, my first question is, I'm not sure if you already said, but what is the store uh, opening guidance for fiscal 24? Uh, it will remain on the same lines, Prakash, most likely anywhere from 800 to 1,000 stores. Okay, and this year we closed at 1,074 net. 1,074 net, yes. Okay, and these are uh, largely in the existing states, or you plan to induce any new states? One call, definitely. We're looking to expand into Chhattisgarh, Kerala, and Madhya Pradesh. But these will be small, for as you could say, you know, between 20 and 25 stores in each of the three cities of Cochin, 
uh, Indore and Raipur. We will uh, you know, stabilize the operations and then we will expand from there. Okay, but currently in these states there is no store as of now, yes? Uh, these are completely new states for us and uh, we are going here because they are contiguous to the states in which we operate in a major way. Okay, perfect. And one clarity on the SSG growth of uh, 12 month plus stores, 15% is a very strong number. Just trying to understand, uh, is there any one-off, how to read this, is it sustainable? See, definitely uh, Q3 and Q4 are slightly better months for us, uh, you know, normally, I would say. Uh, so seasonality effect would be there to some extent. You know, you obviously can't expect the same in Q1. Uh, outside of that, a little bit of seasonality, there's nothing more to it. There's no one-off to the growth. And Pulia basis, how was uh, this number? Uh, uh, full year basis, um, you know, I can give you guidance on the thing. You know, we expect that we'll grow at least at 25 percent at least for the full year. Uh, on the overall number, I'm not talking about the same stuff. So yeah, so if you got to pen in like SSG growth for 12 months plus, uh, that should be what, uh, 5 to 10 percent range or? Um, yeah, I, I, I would assume at least that much, at least, at least that much. Okay, got it. And lastly, on the diagnostic, so uh, quite a faster ramp up now on the, you know, the access and uh, the membership. So, uh, and, and I think in one, two quarters, you'll be beta neutral also. So what's the way forward? I mean, uh, uh, so would we expect to explore a new city or we'll go more deeper within uh, this place or what is the plan here? Um, we will, you know, fully expand into Hyderabad right now. We have around 10 centers at this point of time. We will add two more and that will cover Hyderabad fully for us. Uh, we will continue to expand the membership and uh, I don't think we'll venture into a new city till we have uh, you know, grown significantly from this number. We currently, you know, we're happy to tell you that we have around 100,000 members right now. The plan is now for us to actually get, you know, moving on the B2B segment. Now almost 99% of it is B2C, and we think, uh, you know, with the full network being set up across the B2B, we will be in a position to make the offering available to our B2B customers. I'll let Chetan answer this, I know, if you have anything to add, Chetan. Uh, no, I think, uh, Marika, that's fine. Prakash, if you have a follow-on, I can pick it up. Okay. If I may squeeze last one here. Omni-channel Q&Q growth is flattish. Uh, has online been little muted and uh, we are back to offline? Or how to read this data? Uh, yeah, our Omni-channel, uh, actually, uh, you know, if you look at the pure online segment of our Omni-channel file, that you know, has been fact for various reasons. You know, there are a certain set of customers who want to go online. And there are, uh, and unfortunately, there's a lot of competitors out there who are willing them with higher discounts at this point. So those who are inclined towards that are probably going out there. Those who are there with us continue to stay with us, and we're growing slowly out there. But I think till the noise of all the people drops significantly, I don't think, uh, you know, we will see any significant growth out there. Noise is dropping. I mean, if you see most online guys are reducing discounts and noise, I guess, is dropping. So, okay. Great. Uh, we, we will see the effects of it hopefully going forward, uh, Prakash. Right. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arshita Jain from Noama Group. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, good evening. Uh, congratulations on the good set. So my question, first question is on the cash uh, generation. So when I look at your two expansion plans, almost like 1,000 stores in FY24, maybe similar hundred in FY25, and with cash and books of about 280 crores, and uh, when I see your OCS after these large negative 8 crores, so just wanted to understand when can we see a good cash generation from our existing stores? And also, is there any plan to raise fund in the near future? So, I'll take this question. So, on the on the balance sheet, as you're right, we have around 280 crores of cash. And uh, if you observe, 
are booked up net debt free, which means that there's uh, enough headroom for a leverage. But on an as is basis with the expansion, what the company is uh, you know, you know, going out, easily we can target 700 to 800 stores with the existing cash. We are mindful of the cash, but we won't at a certain point in time go out for a line of credit for the working capital requirement. Okay, and any plan for QIC or just the working capital credit that you are looking for? At this point, it's only working capital. Okay, uh, thank you. Secondly, uh, you mentioned that there is a seasonal uh, benefit in Q3 and Q4. Uh, is that the reason why our uh, private label non farmer contribution has increased this quarter so from 5.1 to 5.7%? Or is this something which is sustainable even in the coming quarters? Any color on that? On pharma does not have any seasonal kind of benefit out there. We are focusing on that a little bit more. We were at around three, three and a half percent last year, and uh, the, uh, the effort is to actually get it up to seven or eight percent over the period of this year. Um, yeah. So by non what I mean is uh, the portion which I am talking about, the FMCG part is three, three and a half. The focus is to make that, you know, come to seven or eight percent. Okay. And what will uh, lead to that? Is it our existing Metro Tier 1 or as we move to Tier 2, Tier 3, that will lead to that contribution? Uh, no, 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 it's just a uh, focus on it, which basically means we are expanding the range of products, making them slightly better, you know, visible in the stores. We're also changing the format of some of the new stores out there to make it easier for customers to pick up these products. Earlier, most of our stores, almost all stores, were served from behind the counter and the general goods are also served from behind the counter. Makes it slightly more tougher for customers to pick those up. So we, our newer stores are coming up with the self-serve model in the front, which makes it easier for us to sell the general goods on there. Okay, really helpful. And there's this last one on diagnostics. Now, I think we started last year in February. Now we are in May, almost more than one year over now. Uh, is there a renewal rate that we are tracking for diagnostic customers or subscribers? Um, it would be really helpful if you can share that data. Okay, uh, Ashka, just to recap, uh, you know, in the past we have said that we intend to maintain the average quarterly loss uh, at five crores. Uh, we expect that phase to at least continue till end of the <laughs> uh, you see, you know, it, it's important for these new centers that have been open to follow the same trajectory. So we expect to have, you know, improve from Q3 onwards. But the phase that we had described earlier, that will at least continue till end of Q2 of FY24. Okay. No, but my question was, in terms of the patients who are already subscribing to your plan, have they renewed it, uh, those who would have subscribed in say, Feb 22 or March 22? All right, so no, that's a fair question. Yeah. And then, oh yeah, I misunderstood your question. So, uh, yes, you know, we we will talk more about renewals as we go forward. Uh, what I had mentioned was that the right way, we have determined that the right way to look at renewals is not exact on-time renewals, but renewals within a six month of the uh, plan expiry. So it's still early days for us to uh, give, an, uh, give a guidance. What we have seen is that we are, uh, we are having, uh, you know, 33% renewal from the March 22 cohort, and that's just 60 days since the year, uh, plans expired. But this is very early. Uh, you know, we need more time to form a view and subsequently to give you a guidance. Sure, this is really helpful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hari Tamad from Avengers Park. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, can you share the blended discount rate uh, for the pharmacy retail segment uh, that, that uh, we're seeing currently uh, for the quarter? And then uh, do you see this trending down uh, basis or uh, what you're seeing with respect to competition and, and uh, you know, some of the challenges uh, that they're facing? especially the online player. Um, see, our discount now stands at 17.1% overall. Uh, unfortunately, it does not come down as yet. Uh, while we are seeing slightly less 
advertisement from one of our uh, one or two of our competitors. There are at least two of them who are making enough noise right now, and they're all talking about a 25% discount for the first three purchases, even today. So um, we all know about the struggles of one of our competitors, at least on the online side. But the thing is, it is not, you know, it, it, it's not across the board. There are still people active. So that's the thing. Uh, are we seeing any dropping in discounts? Little bit, but that has not really affected us as of now. Okay. And on, on the operating a bit the margin for the pharmacy retail segment again. So we are we are uh, we are around 3.5, 3.6 percent for the last couple of quarters. Uh, how should we look at this number for FY24, uh, given that we'll have a higher percentage of our shares, uh, which are about 12 months? So uh, and then uh, you know the 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 thousand dollar store additions that we're targeting. So overall, uh, you know, any guidance on uh, this number? Going forward, uh, although I can't speak for Q1 right now because Q1 typically is not a great quarter for us, but over the period of one year, I think we will slowly start to see an increase in the overall margin. Um, for us, we'll still have a significant number of stores which are below two years. Two years is where the actual you know, uh, potential of the stores real, uh, is you know, seen. Uh, we expect a 10% kind of a bid at the two-year level, and today, 50% of our stores are under two years at this point. Uh, given that we are going to be adding anywhere between 800 to 1,000 stores this year also, I don't expect a significant change. If any change were to happen, it will most likely happen because of the benefits of scale uh, on, let us say, reducing the corporate costs or maybe reducing the warehousing cost or possibly increasing the margin to drive heavy. But the downward track will continue to be there. Okay. And one on the diagnostics business, uh, Chetan, you, you mentioned something, uh, a number for level two centers. So uh, just trying to understand how different are these from the full service centers and uh, you know, if you can also share the uh, you know, total cross block or investment uh, in diagnostics till date. All right. So uh, I'll take the first part of your question. You see, uh, we are currently describing our centers as, uh, you know, Full service diagnostic center, those are the ones that have uh, MRI, CT, and downwards. The next definition we use is level two centers. These are diagnostic centers which uh, have ultrasound and below, and in a one case here or there, it may have an MRI or it may have a CT. But these are our level two uh, centers. The third is the collection center, which is you know an extremely interesting feature because yeah, our collection centers are housed within our pharmacy. Uh, so going going in the reverse order, currently we have over 115 collection centers in Hyderabad, and we currently have seven level two centers. We have three full service diagnostic centers live, and in this quarter we expect one more full service center to go live. So at the end of the quarter we will have four plus seven, and you know, any new collection centers that we open. Uh, on your question on gross block, I'll uh, request Sujit to step in. So on gross block, as in sorry, first March for the diagnostic business, uh, it's around 96 crores, and the net block is around 90 crores. So uh, this number of uh, around 170-odd crores that we see on the balance sheet uh, as assets uh, under the segment, uh, so, what what makes up uh, what makes a difference? Sure, I can clarify that. So, a large uh, part of that, close to 77 crore, is the right of use asset, which is the lease asset for our premises centers, and there are other uh, small components of other items. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's helpful. Uh, thanks for taking my questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prakash Agarwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Mr. Agarwal, your line is in talk mode. Please go ahead with your question. Yeah, hi, sorry. Uh, I just wanted to uh, check on if there's an update on that automated uh, warehouse that we were planning. Uh, 
Prakash. Yeah. So Prakash, as you know, um, the Hyderabad warehouse today sends out 50% of all the tablets and all through the automated stuff. Uh, we were having a little bit of an issue with building out the new warehouse in Hyderabad. Hence, we have actually moved the first part to Chennai. Chennai, we have just taken a premises which is ready to go. We are looking to set it up with full automation. I hope uh, you know that we should be able to get it out in possibly four to five months from now, fully done. Okay, so the Hyderabad site, it's not happening anymore. It will happen. It will probably be the second one which to go on. Hyderabad, we were planning to actually build the facility and then house the entire thing. Uh, yes. So that has you know, entered into a little bit of a snag, I would say, with the uh, permission issues and all. So hence, we have leased the premises in Chennai and we are starting that out, out right away. Okay, and, and the way we would be entering Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, and Kerala would be like to start with the supplies from adjoining states and to follow with their own warehouse, or what is the plan? That's right, that's right, that's exactly right. So they are adjacent, so we'll be supplying from Nagpur and uh, for these two places, both uh, Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh, and uh, from Chennai for the Cochin side. Little inefficient. But it, I, we believe it will be much better than setting up a full warehouse for a 25 store kind of operation. So till that becomes stable and profitable, we will not actually set up a warehouse. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, that's all from us. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Divya Daga from Widget Global Securities. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. I have two questions. My first question is, sir, can you explain me about inventory? Uh, what about the inventory we have that gets old or expired? Sure. So all pharma uh, branded inventory is bought on a fully returnable basis. So at expiry, it is returned to the manufacturer for full uh, cost recovery out there. They exchange it for some other product. And what about private label products? Private label, uh, then of course we have the inventory risk. So if you don't sell it, it basically just gets dumped. Okay, and uh, can you provide me the number that uh, in this year happened? Uh, the private label, um, you know, expiry you're saying? Yes, sir. I think that's total. Oh, okay, uh, give me a second. Uh, so, can we come back to you offline on this? This year, the number is slightly higher, I must say, and that is mainly because of the one-time COVID kind of inventory. Otherwise, okay. uh, it is usually manageable. Uh, typically, we see that the overall profits on private level are so high, the gross margin is 80%. We are easily able to take a small inventory risk on that. Okay. Uh, my next question is, uh, are we expecting 7% of operating profit margin sustainable in near future that we have in this quarter? So if you're talking about um, EBITDA growth from here where we are at around operating EBITDA of around 3.5, 3.6, that's going to be slightly more gradual and it is going to be a result of both operating benefit as well as uh, increase of uh, you know, new products coming in and the stores maturing. Uh, it will, so as of now, I can tell you that for all, if the network were all two years and more, uh, we would actually be at a, a overall uh, of around 7%. That, that's the end base number. Otherwise, if you take out the rents and everything else and if you account for it, regular operational data, that's going to be around 5%. For stores which are about two years, the entire thing is 3.5. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankit Bansal from AV Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Please go Hello. Anji, sir, my question is that the kind of uh, model you are pursuing, like, uh, operating in some of the states like in the south when you will move to bigger cities or newer cities like delhi in north india where uh, like i can say of myself i have never heard of med plus before the ipo 
So what is your strategy? How will you go deep into that market? How will you operate? How will your how you will attract customer uh, uh, of getting medicines from you rather than from the established player in the north? Like Apollo is a very well established player in the north. What are your views on that? Sure. See, we currently operate in seven states, and we're going to three new states this year. But uh, don't let the seven number fool you out there. I know it's a smaller world listing of the overall 29 states which we have. But these seven states account for around 40-45% of the overall market of the country. We are also there in all the big cities except Delhi. In six of the top seven cities in the country, we are there. We have 450 stores in Hyderabad, Bangalore, and Chennai. Around 300 in Calcutta, 250 odd in Pune. And roughly around 100 stores in Bombay. So except for Delhi, we are there everywhere. So the plan is for us, to, we believe that the markets in which we are there are big enough for us to grow for the next several years. But that doesn't mean that we will not continuously expand slowly into the contiguous states. So we continue to grow. Uh, we will take a call and deliver when the time comes. As of now, we have more than enough market to actually grow into at this point. But, uh, but sir, it, it will take your deep, deep research to get into the Delhi market because it's very unorganized market people like to buy from their um, one person type medicine shop you have to change i think your model i don't know how would you do that uh, but on this strategy of opening new source and new source i don't think it's going to work out in state like north india because they are people i have seen people they are very much organized with their, buy their medicine from the particular shop uh, uh, instead of buying from a player like you, where they, where they have not heard a single hiring name of you before the IPO. What are your comments? How could you will penetrate into like this market? Uh, okay, my dear Chetan, uh, you know, you have made some very good points and we will reflect on them. Uh, could we move to the next question? Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Siddhan Chaudhary from Perpetuity Ventures. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is, uh, we have seen a gross margin improvement of around 40 basis points, quarter on quarter. So sir, what could be the possible reasons for it? And uh, like what part of it is contributed uh, by private label? So on the private label, uh, I think in the earlier portion of this speech, um, it was clarified that we have around 14% in terms of the total share in the sale. In terms of gross margin improvement, yes, we have seen some efficiencies in the inventory management and lower provision. So that contributed to an increase. And I think it was explained earlier as well. Uh, so can I get a breakup of this expansion for private level? Uh, is there any data? I think we can do that offline. Okay, sir. No problem. Uh, my next question is, uh, the full year capex for this year was around 170 crore. Can you give a breakup between the diagnostics and uh, our business? So on the diagnostics, I'll clarify because that will help you. Uh, on the diagnostics, as on 31st March, the gross block is around 96 crore, and the net block, as on 31st March, is around 90 crore. The balance okay. in the, if you are referring to the segment result, there is a right of use asset, which is under index 116, the lease uh, asset, and therefore you can now make your calculation. Okay. Uh, yeah, do we have a guidance for the next uh, year for both pharmacy and diagnostics? Uh, well, you see, uh, uh, for the diagnostics business, for the most part, uh, we have already announced our plan. There may, be, there may be small investments here and there within the existing centers or some additional uh, collection centers that we open. But uh, in, in context of what we have spent so far, uh, no material move is uh, expected in the next, uh, in the, uh, in the FI24. And for the pharmacy business? For the pharmacy side, as you said, we're going to add anywhere between 800 to 1,000 stores. 
and each store typically takes an investment of roughly around 30 lakh rupees, and that requires, that includes the inventory in it. So, okay. yeah, doing the math, it should be from 240 to 300 crores. Okay, sir. Uh, so, my last, last question is for the diagnostic business. Uh, do we have a data for that were conducted during the last quarter? Uh, yes, we, we do have that, uh, you know, but I just don't have it handy. Uh, we can probably take it offline. Okay, so no problem. Uh, that's it. That's all my thing. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Kadam from Kana Rubeco Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, am I audible? So the audio is very low from your line. Please increase the volume of your device. I'll move to him. Just one minute. Mr. Kadam, we are not able to hear you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. So I just wanted to check uh, with the team. Uh, what, was, uh, what was the reason for changing the reporting of the segment? Sir, sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Kadam, but we are not able to hear you, sir. Please Is use the handset mode. Yeah, I am on handset. Is this fine? Please go ahead. Okay, so just wanted to check with the management team. What was the reason for changing the reporting uh, in terms of layer segmental? Yes. So, okay, yeah. so uh, I think uh, if you observe, so there is no significant change. Earlier, there were three reporting segments, wholesale, retail, and diagnostic. We have now merged because we have merged the wholesale also into retail because wholesale is not a main uh, business for the company. And though it continues to be an operating segment, it no longer qualifies to be a reportable segment. And that's the only change. And that's not a significant number. And like, for, so maybe in the, uh, if I just take the diagnostic, if I move to the segmental profit line, so this quarter uh, maybe, uh, uh, assuming that like uh, last uh, for last quarter we had reported in the diagnostic testing somewhere around uh, uh, profit for the uh, segment at 46.8 million whereas now if i just check the same number <coughs> what is it for the december quarter it is something in the 62.69 million just wanted to know how to reconcile these two numbers I think what you have also you observe is we have now clarified on the unallocable finance cost, which was earlier going as part of pharmacy alone. So that presentation we have corrected it along with the segment change. Okay, so maybe I'll just come back. I just have to help sure. with this reconciling this particular. Sure, we'll do it offline. Yes. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Neelam Punjabi from Perpetuity Ventures. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for taking my question. First of all, congratulations for some good set of numbers. Um, so my first question is on the corporate cost. So if I back calculate it using uh, the disclosures that you all have provided, it seems that our corporate costs have gone up sequentially. Could you please explain uh, what is the reason behind the thing? Uh, they may have gone up slightly. I'm not sure if it is a significant number. We expect that the cost will come down as we go forward as the scale increases. But let me look it up and then you know come back to you on this. You know. Got it. Okay. Uh, secondly, so uh, in our operating EBITDA brick slide, uh, there are some pre-operative expenses for uh, pharmacy business of about four crores for the quarter. What is this pertaining to? So I think they represent uh, two parts. One is the property which the company leases, which has a gestation period of two to three months to operate, right from the way from the time we sign up. And second is we hire a considerable number of employees, which is required for opening the new stores on a go forward basis. So that, from a presentation perspective and an operation perspective, we call it out as pre operative. Understood. Okay. Uh, my next question is on the diagnostic business. Uh, could you uh, 
just highlight your strategy uh, for uh, incentivizing our existing uh, subscribers to renew their uh, existing plans. How are we incentivizing them? Uh, Neelam, that's a very good question. Uh, so you're right uh, in bringing the focus on renewal. Uh, currently, there is absolutely no differential between a customer who is renewing and who is uh, buying a new plan. And this was actually done intentionally because we wanted to gather data on what is the natural pace of uh, renewals. Uh, in the coming months, we will introduce a differential between renewal and new sign up, which will automatically incentivize existing customers to renew on time. Got it. Okay. And lastly, uh, could you give a broader level uh, outlook uh, for our aspirations for top line growth and uh, margins for uh, the next two to three years? So, uh, I'm not going to talk about the next two to three, but for this year, definitely. We expect a top line growth of at least um, you know, anywhere between 20 to 25 percent. That would be the minimum. Um, on the margin side, I expect it will more or less be flattish, only because you know we will have a significant number of new stores coming up even now. Uh, if there is any benefit, it's going to come out of any automation which we do on the back end, or uh, the scale benefits which come out of you know engaging top line uh, for us. Got you. That's helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. <laughs> Thank you. I thank all participants on this call for your interest in the Metplus journey. Our investor relations team can be contacted at ir at metplusindia.com. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Metplus Health Services, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us. Penny Minard is Connect Alliance.